All right. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about partially decoupling web forms and why that might make your user experience with those probably better. <laughs> um, so hi, I'm Bryn. I am a bit of a CSS nut. Um, but I need a bit of a day job, so I do Drupal as well. Um, yeah, nothing more to say if you have questions. Yeah, this is fun. I can't promise you that you'll learn something, but I promise you'll probably smile at least once or twice. Um, so now we're at a really important part. You can't really see it up there, but I can see it on my screen. Do we want GIFs and stuff? Yeah. yeah, okay, cool. We'll turn party mode on. Cool. So first thing is, like, what is user experience? Um, in a nutshell, it's basically how a user experiences your application or website. This should be good. As we all know, it probably isn't. Well, maybe not in most cases, but in some. Um, we can talk about accessibility in this area and stuff like that, but in reality, it's how does a general person come to your site and can they actually get to the information that they want? Um, so this is one of the very cool party mode slides. Um, this is not great user experience, but it looks fun and cool. And we also love The Simpsons. Um, so why do we need to worry about user experience and web forms with Drupal? Um, Today I'm going to be focusing on multi-page forms because regular forms are kind of fine. Um, <laughs> so what's the issue with Drupal web forms? Um, a regular web form? Not much. They do the thing, you can fill out the fields and have a good time. Um, but on multi-page forms, they're clunky. There's page loads and you can enable Ajax but there's still communication with the server, there's still a wait and kind of bad. Like if you have a shoddy network connection or something, you might drop out, web form might die. Um, so there's not really any issue with Drupal web forms in terms of building them, but on the front end, they are sketchy. <laughs> um, so if anyone's ever seen these cool little dotty things, you've built a web form or a multi-page web form before and you've enabled it and you've gone, why did I do this? Um, so this is sort of unstyled. So, I mean, you can style these things, but you, lo you lose a lot of uh, like user interactions and stuff or you spend a lot of time building them and then they're kind of clunky. Um, so we should take the good and replace the bad things. So web form module, is really good at making structured data and, and it's good for an admin to build these things out. But on the front end, there's a lot left to be desired and it kind of looks like those things were made in the year 2000 and never, never made good again <laughs> or never looked at. Um, so if we decouple these things, we can have a better user experience. Um, I would say we could have better performance. I mean, you could argue with me with that one. Um, you're way more flexible, like you're no longer tied to Drupal. Uh, you could have a JavaScript developer with their cool JavaScript skills. Um, it can be easier to maintain. Uh, you don't, like I said, you don't need a Drupal developer anymore. You don't need this person made these crazy, like uh, pre-processed things in the theme or typical thing when you pull down someone else's work and it's janky um, and it can be scalable we can write sort of like one set of components for multiple sites with JavaScript and just plug them in on the front so ooh, that's, um, so we have to think about like do we want to decouple our form in a fully decoupled way or a Aggressively to coupled way. Fully decoupled things come with their own problems. Um, you lose sort of like previewing and all that kind of stuff. 
there's solutions to them, but like it's not out of the box. Um, but progressively decoupled stuff gives you the ability to be able to still use Drupal to render your like page and your application, but then just like cut out a little area for my JavaScript component. And this diagram will explain such things. Um, so you can see our traditional sort of Drupal thing. They're all bundled together and they're friends and they love each other a lot. Decoupled, almost like a divorced family in some ways. <laughs> the CMS doesn't like the front end, any well, it's most likely the front end doesn't like the CMS anymore and they email each other a little bit. Um, this didn't happen in my house at all. Um, then there's partially decoupled stuff. Um, and that's where Drupal still renders the page. You still have like all the nice stuff that Drupal has, caching and, and like user context and stuff like that. But we're using an endpoint to render those components. Um, so how do we implement such cool things? So a user will still build their web form like normal. This is the main benefit, I guess. You, your users can still add pages and different types of elements. Like anyone's ever looked at web form, there's like a gazillion elements. And they do wild things, but you can do checkboxes, which is important. <laughs> um, so how do we get that information to the front end? Now we have a few options here and I've left some of them off the little dot points because like you could do GraphQL or something. But like the main ones are JSON API or REST API. Uh, REST comes out of the box. So you need to do, there's a few, you probably need another module to expose the, like the submission side of stuff with any of these options. So not got CMS ready in some ways, but as we'll see later, there's maybe a case to use web form for different things other than making forms. Um, but yeah, um, the other option is Drupal settings, which is the option that I go with because one, it's out of the box. Two, Drupal already uh, gives you like that settings blob out of the box. So you can just access it with the window object. Um, plus it feels more native. This feels nicer. Um, so cool. We got our Drupal settings and this is how it does things. So we just pre-process this in the theme layer. Or you could make a module. My suggestion is make a module. But if you're working on GovCMS, chuck it in the theme. Which is what we did. Oh. <laughs> so you can just attach a new object to Drupal settings. And then we get to make things pretty. And that's fun, because pretty is good. Um, so now we're free from Drupal, and we're in JavaScript land, and things are arguably somewhat better. They come with their own problems. Um, so we get to pick a framework. Please, save yourself some time. Just go to view, that's the best one. IMO, <laughs> maybe Svelte, haven't been there. Um, so how do we pass that data from the window object into, in this case, Vue.js? Window.drupal settings, yay, very cool. And now we're in beast mode, like Willy. So we're gonna take a bit of a look under the hood. Um, and we're going to not be in full screen mode for a second. And I'm going to change tabs. All right, this is where it gets a bit crazy. All right, forget this. Actually, I need to change page. Z indexes. <laughs> so how does, so with, with web form, like you can see, I have just a regular Drupal South web form. I'll build it. There's all, all things. Might make full screen. Um, like that. Um, <clears throat> so, as we'll see in a second, I'll turn off all the front end stuff and we'll go back into janky Drupal mode. 
Um, but this is just like a third party setting through a module. Can't do it in GovCMS. That's all right. It's getting there. Um, now, if I go to view, oh no, our presentation, it's gross. Um, but you'll see that like all my things are still rendered out. Like Drupal can still render this form. So if there was a situation for some reason, something broke, client's mad, just switch it back to this one and say, you could have this. And then I'll go, please no. Um, but we can see that uh, a few of these things are like, so we rewrote conditions basically um, in JavaScript because the stuff that comes out of web form is terrible <laughs> uh it uses like html selectors to check to see if things are checked and stuff it's kind of you would kind of just want it to be like this nice is it true or false i don't know um but you'll see that there's like some of these pages where we don't get go back let's not go past that page but conditions work um if i turn that back on uh, is that. <clears throat> um, so the user doesn't lose any functionality really. They just, I guess they get a better experience on the front end. I guess the only limitation would be each of the types of fields we would have to like rewrite a, or a React component for such things. Um, now you can see in this case, we're using web form to make a slideshow. It's kind of silly, but it, it proves a further point that we could use web form for other things in Drupal other than making a web form. Like this is quite good for structured data or in another project, we used it to like build quizzes for the user to be able to step through things. And because they didn't want to have to store that information, on in in the gov cms instance like this was really good because the users could still build web forms and they could still have that step-by-step -step process and um they were still able like a user can build this right you don't need a dev anymore well please still keep us in but in for the main for the main point you you don't the content author can still build these out the way that they typically know how. We can provide documentation around, if you want a crazy thing, add this attribute to this, or we've made a custom web form field element. Um, like if I was to have more time and not change my mind at the last minute about how I'm gonna do this presentation, you can see like I just have like these advanced HTML fields. They like got the images in them. <laughs> um, so I would like rewrite an actual image field that allowed a user to upload an image into it and do custom handling for that. Um, to here. Um, so yeah, I think being able to decouple these web forms allows us to have one, a better user experience. Two, it opens up the door to better possibilities around um, how our users interact with web forms. Like it's not, it's not no longer a web form. It's now a, a, a structured piece of data. Um, yeah, I've kind of like lost track of where I'm at, but I'm gonna put this up because it's funny. Um, it's maybe better if we have some, some questions. I'm gonna go to the last slide. That has, you can find me in places at Gumnut. Um, yeah, does anyone have any questions or queries? It is, so yeah, we're basically pre-processing web form, like the web form on the page. It's getting that third party setting whether we want to use it or not. So you can still use this interchangeably with regular web forms. like. I wouldn't recommend using this for a single web form that just has like name, date of birth, and right? Seems overkill, but 
you can still use them interchangeably because each form has its own setting. Um, but yeah, it gets wedged into Drupal settings. Web form, data. You'll see that we have like a giant object of things. And then like web forms, just using the window object and grabbing all this information. And then we are doing fancy things in JavaScript. Yeah, you could do, you could easily, yeah. Like I haven't done that for this, so I'm not gonna do that because it'll look sketchy, it'll probably break. But yeah, you can easily write a, something to detect if JavaScript's disabled or not, and then just always serve the old web form. Um, I mean, Vue.js can detect whether it's using JavaScript or not. So, hey, just get that to serve the old web form. Yeah, so there's a web form rest module used with caution. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it, it's a good module. Uh, Security minded people may take issue with it, but like, I'm edgy and cool, so I don't care. <laughs> um, but we've, we used it in production, and if you only enable like the submission stuff and you write handlers around what gets submitted, it's not, not a problem. Um, yeah, it just wants J, uh, like rest back, and it works. So <clears throat> we just pre-process the web form and in here we just like grab each field inside the web form. Um, and then, yeah, we're pushing this information to run some other functions that we've written that, scroll down a bit more. So each field just gets the key and a bunch of other values that are attached to that form. Um, you can see this is like where I do the, please be a media field. <laughs> um, but basically each, uh, each field will have this data structure attached to it. Probably can't read it, but like it has conditions, uh, the content, like if it's a question or not, like these kinds of things so that you can still loop over grouped checkboxes or radio buttons and all that kind of stuff. Um, a good thing might be opening my view tools. Also great, great plugin. Um, if I go to this one, you'll see if statements everywhere. Um, so this is like a general gist stuff that you're getting from Drupal. It's been pre-processed and packaged up in a nicer format than what Drupal spits it out. Um, if I go make this a little small so it looks far out. Um, if I find a page That is conditional. I get there. Oh wait, I turned them. Haven't turn party mode on. That one. This guy. <laughs> yeah. Um. Page one. Open this transition up. Open up that, and go to here. You'll see that conditions an empty array, which is not correct. Uh, it'll be the page, sorry. Um, conditions has an object. Um, it will handle um, yeah, so web form comes with basically just HTML selectors. Yeah. Um, but we've just tried to make it a bit more palatable. Um, and we've just, yeah, conditions, you pass in rules. It works out if it's like and or XOR or however. All of the conditions work, basically. Um, 
but yeah, just it's checking to see if those values are right. And then Vue.js is handling the state when you check on buttons and, and all that kind of stuff. And then at the end, when you package all that up, it smits all the things away. <laughs>